If you don't recognize my guest today, you obviously don't listen to the radio, you don't read the newspapers, and you don't watch television. <laughs> Dits, it's lovely to have you here. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. I've got, I got to tell you one thing. We were in a studio. You were reading the news. You read the news, quickly ran out to the toilet, changed into a gown like you are now, <laughs> Went to an affair, went to a, uh, a, gala. a, a ga whatever it was, <laughs> and before the show had finished, you'd come back to read the news again. Oh my gosh, you remember I that? Do. Is that part of your life? Is that normal? Don't tell my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was away that day. No, uh, it is not necessarily what I normally do. That was actually something a bit crazy, but that is... That is a bit indicative of the crazy life that I have, so, which is, you know, um, anchoring business news, running out for a gala. I've got sometimes three to four in an evening. It, it's always a hugely crazy day from five in the morning onwards. So you start at five o'clock in the morning? I do. You do have children? I have two children. And you they're take in China. Them to school? Uh, oh. Well, yes, I do when I'm in China. So it's hard. I mean, I have a multicultural life which is living in China and living in South Africa. I spend 90% of my time in South Africa. Were you born in China? So I was born actually in the States. Okay. So it does get confusing. Uh, People always confusing. say, where are you actually from? And I say, wait, that's a loaded question. <laughs> we could be here for a couple hours talking about where I'm from, actually. But the long story made short is I was born in the States. I went to school in Taiwan. So I went to an all Chinese school. I grew up in a Chinese education, speaking Chinese. Then. Um, moved to, well, I was in America first, then Taiwan, then over to Thailand, where I was a news presenter. Uh, in Taiwan, I won something <laughs> at the equivalent of Taiwan Idol, so that is how I got into the TV industry. Thailand... You won, Tiny. You were... Yes, I was a winner of uh, Taiwan Idol, and You do sing, just, just for the record, you sing as well. And you so have a beautiful voice. As well. I have one of your CDs, which you gladly gave me. Thank you. Kindly gave me, so... So let's carry on. <laughs> so then, yeah, from there, then it was on to Thailand. I anchored the news in Thailand, then on to Hong Kong, and then from Hong Kong, South Africa. Hold on a second. South Africa, Taiwan, also China. Thailand. Yes. How many languages do you speak? So I speak six languages, <laughs> but especially um, you, you Chinese, know what we're doing. sometimes we're... English, <laughs> and Thai. Because what we do is I've got many people to do the outro. So we're going to get you to do the outro in Chinese okay. when we finally come no, to the no, end. No of that. I'll, no, I'll brief you as to what you have to do. But what's, so when did you come to South Africa? I mean, with all this talent, first of all, it's <laughs> how did you accumulate all this talent? <laughs> well, it's a good question. <laughs> um, I guess starting out as a child, you know, I was uh, on a lot of TV shows with a Chinese dance troupe. So it was ribbon in America, dancing or? in America okay. when I was five. Um, and I was part of this very a uh, nice dance troupe of young children. And so I would go out there on the Today Show. We did all these was this, morning sorry, breakfast shows. Was this shows. cultural or was this, I mean, did you do it because you were Chinese in America or was this from your parents? So it's from my parents. Okay. My parents are very traditional Chinese. Mm -hmm. um, my mother came from a family of very successful uh, property dealers mm -hmm. in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, uh, was in the medical field, so he traveled all over for medical conferences. Um, he published in many, many scientific journals about uh, various cures for liver cancer and treatments. And um, he was a Harvard-educated scientist who came from China at that time, and they were going to go back, actually, uh, during the sort of the mm -hmm. communist revolution, but they ended up staying in the United States, and that's where my brother's who are much older than me and then myself. I was the baby sister by accident <laughs> who came along. And so, yeah, I was from a very traditional family. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, they always believed in carrying on our Chinese traditions. Even though we were in the States, they wanted me to speak English fluently. They wanted to have an opportunity for their children, but they also wanted us to keep the Chinese tradition. Mm -hmm. So that was very important for them. They enrolled us in a Chinese school. They enrolled us you know, in various activities. And so one of them that I got involved in was the Chinese traditional dance. Mm. And every week I would go and we would dance ribbon dances mm. and various like different acrobatics and things like that. And so um, we had the opportunity to perform mm. at many community centers, the Chinese events, and then actually, you know, our name started getting out there and we would 
suddenly on a national arena where we were doing the Today Show, the Good Morning America, and various shows, and, they, and it was really an incredible experience. But that's what brought me into sort of the so performing scene. Performing. Did and you go to university? Did you go to college? I did. I went to the University and of Pennsylvania. Um, and you studied? And I studied international relations, and that was my main focus. And I actually always wanted to be a diplomat <laughs> growing up. Um, but then the well, State Department kind of, yeah, yeah, I got nervous, actually. I thought, oh my goodness, how good is my you know, knowledge of politics and stuff? Uh, I think Especially I knew a lot about speaking, finance. Yeah, but speaking Chinese, family. I think, would have given you a, an incredible advantage in yeah. that area. Well, in the end, I think I have become a cultural ambassador mm. in many ways from mm. traveling so much. Um, I was very fortunate when I won the Taiwan Idol mm. competition. Part of the contract that you win is actually going on tour representing the Republic of China uh, as an ambassador, as a cultural ambassador. So it was myself and a group of about 10 of us, mm. um, various singers and actors, that would go and perform for Chinese, Chinese. living abroad in all of these communities. So mm. I toured Europe, the South Pacific, um, and it was really an incredible experience. And when I was there, I was the actually the translator for the president mm. of China Television, who was sort of the one who sponsored the whole show. Mm. And he was the one who said, you know, we've got a bilingual news program. We actually need uh, someone to sit in because our anchor you know, had to fly back mm. to the States because there was a death in the family. Mm. Could you sit in for two weeks? And I thought, well, <laughs> I'm studying. And I was also at the Ni National Taiwan Normal University that year. Mm -hmm. And I thought, uh, well, I, I'm studying journalism there, but I'm not sure if I can do it. But I said, why not? I can try. Mm -hmm. It's always good to just get there and try. And so I did. And I ended up loving it. I loved it more than the singing business. Television. I loved doing TV. I loved news. South Africa, how did you get from this international <laughs> career to South Africa and stay here? Well, it wasn't an easy journey. <laughs> um, you know, I think through news, I moved on. So I was at the Thai, uh, Thai TV Channel 11 mm. Newsline in Thailand, then moved on to Hong Kong, where I was with Star News Asia, and I was a primetime anchor there. Mm. And when I got married, my husband said, guess what? We have to move because of his job. And he said, uh, we're moving to... Guess South what? Africa. South Africa. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> and my heart sunk and I just started crying. I was bawling. I you was didn't so, want to come here? Well, I really worked hard, you know, in mm. establishing myself in Asia. Um, I was a primetime news anchor on the news every mm. evening in Hong Kong. And that was going all through China. You know, it's very well known in Asia at the time. And I was at every red carpet event because mm. that's me. I also <laughs> like to mix up the business news and stuff with, you know, events and parties. And, you know, I feel for me getting out there uh, to events is actually my way of networking and making things happen for myself. As a you enjoy MC. that. You I obviously do. And you've written a book, which I have in my hand here, which tells you how to build your brand. And I, there, there are a lot of sh photos over here. Yeah. There are. Are, are they photoshopped or are they real? They are absolutely <laughs> no, real, 100%. <laughs> but you know, but, um, I've been very fortunate to have met some incredible people mm. along the way. You know, people like Oprah Winfrey or Bill mm. Clinton, Kevin Spacey, you know, Britney Spears. I mean, all these different types of people mm. that have crossed the paths of my life. And I guess what I am trying to say in the book mm. about From Z to A Lister, how to build your personal brand, is that these days, everybody is their own personal brand. Mm. Whether you like it or not, whether you think you're a nobody or somebody, you are your own personal brand. How do you find out what works for you on your personal brand? Well, of course, what's, a lot what's of What's the it, advice? What's the, the, there are a lot of pages, lovely pictures here. Um, you've obviously made a success. Uh, you're all over the place. Everybody knows you. And in the few years that you've been here, you've established yourself as a, as a personality. Thank you. Um, but what's the essence? How, does, how do I decide what's good for me? When I say I'm talking in a much broader sense. Right. Well, I think first of all, it is thinking carefully about what position you want to focus yourself in. Mm. What do you love doing? What are you passionate mm. about? What do you want to make happen for yourself? Mm. So from there, obviously you list out you know, about five things, characteristics, or where you want to be, you envision yourself. And I often talk about visualization. Mm. I see myself in certain things. I, I got to South Africa, I knew nobody, mm. you know, because 
I came here for my spouse's job. And that's... There's a fly that loves you. And there's you. a fly that's <laughs> loving me. Well, I'm glad I've got fans. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. I knew nobody, and how was I going to make it happen for myself? And then I saw this Soweto Gospel Choir on television. And I said, I want to perform with them. And then I just thought about it. I visualized. I made those colors very vivid in my head. And that's what I do. I push it to you know, a point where I'm thinking, how am I going to meet them? How am I going to see them? And you know what? One day it happened. In fact, I performed how not did, just but, once, but twice with them. But how did you get to them? Did you push yourself? Do you need someone well, to push? Well, it takes time, mm. of course. Through Gareth Cliff, through Proverb, mm. um, there was an opportunity to do a charity event. And okay. that's what I did. And um, that's where I got that extra in. And that was from one of the parties that I attended. But you like fashion. You love fashion. So I love hats especially. I think everybody should have a signature accessory, mm. whether it's a really cool bow tie, whether it's a bunch of bracelets, whether it's a hat or sort of quirky shoes. Is this you part know, of your, is this part of what you suggest? I do, because when you're getting out there, it's always nice to have something that it distinguishes mm. yourself. Um, you know, I guess whatever works for you, but that signature accessory or the signature pose, mm. that signature look is important. And a lot of businessmen say, oh, I don't need that signature look. But you know what? Mm. In this business, it's all about personal branding. And from what we've seen, you know, in social networking lately, um, everybody is their personal brand, whether you're in business, whether you're in your social circles, whether you're a celebrity, it doesn't matter. You must take control of your brand. For me, so I still do business designers? news. You know, the things I have to do with Sky. So, I mean, I would say that it's still important to think about your head-to-toe so, look. Mm. My favorite designer is Gert Johan Kutsia. He dressed done him for the Met. Yeah, I did him, yeah. Yes. He had the green hair that was going exactly. up in layers. <laughs> and he did this incredible 3D dress for me at the Met, which just was so much fun. In fact, I could even put drinks in it because it was like this sort of incredible design. And then it had um, tree branches hanging out, mm. which he picked from his own palm tree in his garden and dyed them black. He's just so incredible mm. with the way he thinks. He's always out of the box. You've got a lot to you. That we can see. We're going to have to wrap up now. It's gone very fast. What you're going to say now is you've been on the couch with me, David Shapiro, and with you, Jen Su, but you're going to say it in Chinese for the audience. <laughs> thank you, thank you for your attention. I'm Zhou Haiyin, Jennifer. This is David Shapiro. Thank you, thank you. That was marvelous. And this is Jen Su's book, which tells you how to get onto the couch with me, David Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs>